All right, here's a quick walkthrough on the um, KUFI CPE CAT6A modem. Um, so this is a pretty cheap modem type, so it's a, a big draw for some folks that are looking for something on a budget. It has access to B66 and B71, uh, which is a, a big advantage because those are some of the uh, frequencies, some of those upper frequencies that AT&T and T-Mobile are both starting to transition some of their network to. Um, so if you're in an area that only has access to those frequencies, then this is also a good fit for you over one of our other cheaper standard options like the Netgear LB1120. Um, so the first thing that, that we want to do is log into it. So its IP address is 192.168.10.1. Once you get in there, um, ordinarily it will ask you to do a uh, to log into it. So it'll give you a, a little prompt. Um, you just go in there and you put in admin admin, which is the username and password. It's also written on the bottom of the unit, uh, so you'll have that information. That brings you to the status page here. Um, so this will just give you a, a heads up of um, if you are connected to the internet, what your IP address is, um, all that all that kind of good stuff, what MAC address you're running off of. Um, it will tell you um, what type of network you're on. So right now um, I'm on WCDMA, which is 3G service. Um, that mostly has to do with, with where this is being recorded. Um, and it'll give you some other information like it's on a Quectel module as opposed to like a CR wireless module or something like that. Um, there is a log on here, so it'll, if you want to get deep into the weeds and what's been going on in this particular device, it will bring it through. Um, and you can see absolutely everything that has happened on this device, which is nice um, to have easy access to that in case you're experiencing frequent crashes or something of that nature. Um, you have the ability to set the mode on this, so in addition to being a 3G gateway, this thing can also be uh, reprogrammed to be a standard wireless router. So if you have a cable modem, DSL modem, another wireless provider of some sort, and you want to set this up as a standard router as opposed to a modem router combination, you can do so. Um, so it, its default method is uh, 3G, 4G wireless router mode, which basically just means it is a, both a router and a modem, which is then connecting to a um, cell tower, which then connects you to the internet. Um, if you wanted to change it to one of these other options, you can. So standard wireless router mode is going to be the most common. Um, that's if you um, take a, a, you know, for instance, a cable provider moves in, you switch to them, and you wanted to uh, just change all of the all the basic settings on here to where it it uh, only acts as a router. It's no longer a modem type. You can do so. You would just plug their modem into the WAN port on the back of the router. Um, you can do standard wireless AP and AP client bridge mode, um, which honestly I don't know that you would ever really need to do that. Um, and then you have wireless AP client mode, which basically just means um, if you're connecting it to a device that doesn't have a wireless card on it, but does have an Ethernet plug on it, you can make it wireless by using this device. There are cheaper ways to do it though, <laughs> to do that though, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that on a regular occasion. Um, next, you have the 3G, 4G tab. This is probably going to be where you spend the most time. Um, so uh, on here you have, it'll come uh, default as auto select 3G, 4G ISP. So um, if you're using AT&T, it will not have the right APN in there. Um, that has to be user defined. If you're using T-Mobile, then it'll automatically automatically put in the correct username for that or APN for that. I believe if you're using Verizon, it will it has to be user-defined as well. So it gives you access to a myriad of different um, options on here because this is used around the world. Um, and so you probably don't really care about Hong Kong and India's APNs. All you care about is United States. You can find them down here, and they have some presets uh, for USA. However, uh, they don't have all of them. Um, so they have CBW, Centennial Wireless, Singular, Indigo, Stellara, whatever that is, and T-Mobile USA. Um, so if you're using anything other than T-Mobile, essentially, you are going to have to put in the APN yourself. In the case of AT&T, so if you're on a blue plan, then it would be just broadband. That's the APN for that particular carrier. Um, break detection, DDNS, and AT commands, um, you really aren't going to have much use for those. Um, we will publish uh, 
a series of AT commands for troubleshooting, uh, but that will be in a separate guide which we can link inside of, link on the video for this article as well, or article for this video. Uh, VPN, so if you have a VPN that you have to run through the router, uh, be that to circumvent NAT settings or for a work purpose, you can do so here. So it does support PPTP and L2TP, uh, which are the most common VPN encryption types. Um, any time that you're doing that, generally either the VPN carrier or your IT company is going to give you all of these settings. I'm not going to break into it too much. Um, basically, you just have that, that VPN tab there and you can do what you will with it. LAN, once again, here you're not going to mess with this a whole lot unless um, you know what you're doing with LAN settings or unless your IT company tells you to do something in here. Now, wireless is a different story. So wireless is your Wi-Fi. So username and password for your Wi-Fi is determined here. Um, you can see right here the SSID. That is the network name or the Wi-Fi name. So when you pull up your phone and you look for Wi-Fi options, uh, that's that's what comes up. Um, if you know if, if you were to pull that up, you would see, you know your last name, Wi-Fi, and then your neighbors decided to make themselves FBI security van or, or whatever it is that they they name their network. This is where you do it. So it comes default Wi-Fi and then the last uh, portion of the MAC address of the device. Uh, you can change that to be whatever you want. That is user input. Just know that if you are connected to this wirelessly and then you change that, it will kick you off because the wireless network name has changed at that point. Um, so just keep that in mind. Generally, Wi-Fi settings are best to fix if you are connected with a wire um, so that you can change all those all those settings without having to do much of anything. Um, with that said, you can still change it via Wi-Fi. Just know that you're going to get kicked every time that you make a, a change to the network name in particular. Uh, security. So um, you will see a drop down for the types of security. So you can do open system. Uh, which basically means there will be no password. Somebody can log on without having any type of password. Uh, some folks opt to do this if you are so far from your neighbors that no one could actually see your network. Um, it's an attractive feature for some folks simply because uh, you won't ever have to tell somebody your network name ever again. Um, if that is not you, then the next option that you want to mess with is WPA, WPA2 PSK, or this, this bottom option. That is the highest level of uh, network security that you can have, and so that is what you are generally going to want to do. Um, the WPA PSK key right here, that is the network password. So on these units, it is by default set to 123456678. That is obviously not exact, not extremely secure. With that said, not many folks are going to be sitting there trying to crack your password. So if you wanted to leave it, um, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. However, if you want to change that um, because you are security conscious, you can certainly do so. Just use your input into, into this slot. And once you're done, you would hit apply and go from there. Um, all the other settings, you're probably not going to have much of a use for, so everything on here is way, way, way above most people's heads. Uh, WPS, so this is a feature that is listed on the back of the, the unit. There is a WPS button. Um, it is set to disable by, by default. So what WPS is, is it stands for Wireless Protected Setup or Wi-Fi Protected Setup. Um, Basically, that just means you can push a button and a device that you're trying to connect to it. So, for instance, a DirecTV receiver or a TV um, that you don't want to sit there and input a, uh, a you know, a Wi-Fi password on. Uh, you can just hit a button and it will automatically connect to to that device. Um, I don't really recommend it. I find WPS connections to be a little bit unstable. So if you can, um, then go ahead and just put in the password. I know it, it might be a little bit, a little bit of a hassle at first, but um, overall, it makes it worth it uh, to to make sure that that connection is stable. With that said, if you wanted to enable that, you could do so there. Hit apply, and it'll open it back up. Next, you'll have stationless. So if you want to know what has been connected to your um, to your router, then you can do so here. So if we had any devices that were connected to, connected to it, then you can uh, you'd be able to see them. So uh, you know, it could be you know Bobby Sue's cell phone or uh, you know Apple TV living room or, or whatever it is that that you have on there. So you can see exactly what stations are actually connected and which ones are not. 
Um, anything else is really going to be, once again, going to um, to your IT department. So, um, you know, PPTP and L2TP and then IPsec um, settings, those are, are basically all for VPNs. Uh, that is completely up to the carrier um, and, and your IT company to work those out. Uh, access restrictions and port triggering, or otherwise known as port forwarding. Um, this is all stuff that um, you'll you'll have specific applications that'll tell you exactly what you need to be doing for those. Everything else on here really doesn't make too much of a difference, um, other than admin here. Um, so um, you can set up UPnP, which there are some applications that will ask you to set up UPnP and then NAT mode and things of that nature. Um, you can also do backup uh, backup and restore. Um, so my, my recommendation is if you have to change the APN on your device to go ahead and uh, set and hit save on there and that will save the um, that that setting as the default um, the default restoration file uh, in case you have to reset that device for any any particular reason um, but with that said uh, we generally will do that if we pre-configure it for you ahead of time uh, you can do a firmware upgrade at this time I'm not aware of any uh, firmware upgrades that are even available but that always changes so it's always good to come in here and check you know once every six months or so for new new firmware or anytime that you're having an issue searching for firmware is usually a good place to start as well um, and if you wanted to change your password for the device, you can do so here as stated. Its default is admin. However, if you wanted to change it to um, a, a password, uh, this is just to log into the user interface and the admin user interface. Um, so if you wanted to change that for any reason, you could do so on here. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in comments or email us at support at and we'll be happy to uh, help you out in any way that we possibly can.